everyone. Thank you for coming. First of all, uh, if you have any questions or any thoughts, please interrupt me because I, when I speak in public, I tend to speak fast and very bad, and perhaps I skip something that I think people understand. So you don't understand. So I prefer people to interrupt, interrupt me and tell me if they have a question that to keep all the questions till the end. I think it's better for everyone. So I would like to start with questions to the audience. Who here knows about Scikit-Learn? Have you used it? And the rest of people? No? And about Pandas? How many people have used Pandas to know about it? Well, but uh, for those that already know about it, it's good because this talk is not really an introduction about Scikit-Learn and it's not an introduction about Pandas. I'm not going to, to tell you how to use Scikit-Learn or how to use Pandas well because, well, I think there are tons of doubts about, about this in, in other conferences and also there's a lot of tutorials. If you want to learn about using these tools, it's better perhaps to check a tutorial and make some work on your own, work uh, through some examples than to that I telling you how to use it. I think there have been uh, some talks also in the in this meetup group about site to learn about pandas and so I, I don't want to repeat myself. So well uh, for those that don't know anything about what uh, Cyclone and Pandas are, well, Cyclone is a set of uh, scientific algorithms to do machine learning. It was created by, well, scientific machine learning algorithms. It was created in 2000, uh, 2007 as a Google Summer of Code project by a student. I think, Wilson, do you know what is Google Summer of Code? It's a, it's a Google uh, invests money in open source projects for students that are in the university to work in these open source uh, projects. So if you're a student, I really encourage you to to try to find, to, if you like programming, you like coding, it's very fun to work in a World Summer of Code project, you get paid like, when I did it, it was $5,000 uh, for working in the summer, it's World Summer of Code, and you work in open source, which is always great. What? So this uh, scientific, this uh, machine learning uh, set of algorithms uh, was created to uh, like um, addition to SciPy to do this <coughs> machine learning, and it contains uh, uh, algorithms for classification, regression, clustering, natural language processing. You have like decision trees, you have linear regression, you have logistic regression, you have a lot of things. And nowadays, well, it is started in 2007, but it became popular in. 2012, I read in Wikipedia, uh, and it's nowadays is the uh, most commonly used uh, uh, package to work with uh, machine learning in Python. Okay, and then pandas. Pandas is not is not really about machine learning. It's just a tool set to work with table to do table data analysis. So you ha you have like uh, you have tables with different columns and rows, and then you can manipulate your computer uh, in the columns. You can uh, you, uh, you can calculate certain statistics, you can calculate the mean of a certain column, you can filter and say, okay, give me only the, the records, that the, the rows that where this column is equal to this and that, so you can do anything you want. And it was, well, it was created as, um, it was modeled after one thing that exists in the language R, which is a statistical uh, language, programming language, which is a data frame, because in previously, in in the Python world, uh, you only had uh, numpy arrays. Numpy arrays is, is just matrices of numbers. So you didn't have like uh, a table where you say, oh, I, ha I have this column, and this column has this name in the column, and I can manipulate it in a logical way, not just an array of numbers. And I have to remember that the third number is the height of the people, that it was really hard. And this, this guy called Wes McKinney say, okay, I want a tool to be able to analyze table like uh, table like data sets, and uh, he used it for financial quantitative analysis. So that's the reason that Pandas has a lot of time series analysis tools included, because in quantitative uh, trading, you use this to, you have time series that you want to check and see the patterns that might evolve in the, when you're analyzing certain stocks going up and down. But you see this probably was started in 2007 and this one in 2008. What does this mean? What? Yes, well, no, it's wrong. What does this mean? It doesn't change here. It changed here, it doesn't change here. 
I don't know why. And I'll tell you what's the connection. What? Well, here it is. Got some lag. Okay. Then what I want to mean, uh, this is uh, I find it really cute, uh, fun of it. Uh, it's a heartbroken thing because what well, when Sekiloan uh, was born, they didn't have these data frames, so they model all the algorithms to work with NumPy arrays, all array of numbers, always numbers, and think all of them uh, float numbers. So when you have a table at the table where you have uh, strings as name, imagine you have a categorical variable, which is a variable that is not numeric, that you can have, for example, sex, male, female, and other. Uh, then you want, it's not the number, it's you can map it to a number, but uh, it's not directly a number, so you cannot feed it to a second algorithm. So it's, uh, they don't work together very well. It's, uh, there's a difference in, in R, you can, since the data frame is a base object of the language, you all the algorithms are already work. You can say, okay, I have my algorithm and I have this data frame, and these are this is the output, the target variable, and these are the input variables, and it works because it has a what is called a formula language, and you put the formula, you get the data frame, and if it, if it's a categorical variable, it converts it and it does anything uh, it has to do to to make it work. But in Sekulum, you don't have it directly. So what you need, you have to map the data frames to a NumPy array for it to work. Uh, well, uh, in, uh, what I've learned is that in Sekulum uh, 016, uh, the support for working with, uh, with uh, Pandas data frame has improved a little bit. For example, you wanted to do cross-validation, because validation is what is uh, it's a way you uh, work with, when you're doing machine learning, it's a way to, to make sure that your model really uh, models the reality and not just the data set that you're working with. Then what? In second line 016, you can use data frames directly with these cross validation methods, for example, and other things that previously weren't able to, to work directly with this. So it's kind of... Then, uh, yeah, to make the, everything okay till now uh, because some people didn't know about secular pandas uh, it's more or less clear one of, one of them is secular is for machine learning and pandas is for manipulating the data frame okay then you we need to put the we need to transform the data frame into an OP array to be able to work with the secular then to do this you need preprocessing well one thing you can um, for this, uh, Seculum has a set of preprocessors that you can apply to the to arrays of number. So, for example, if you want to standardize uh, a column. This is something that is usually needed when you work with machine learning, certain machine learning algorithms like regression, when you have a reorganization. Then, what you want to do is every uh, in order to um, to account for every column in the same way, you want all them to have mean zero and standard deviation one. Then what you do is you just uh, do an operation to make them all, uh, to make them all uh, look like this. So you you can you can see here that Scikit-Learn has a preprocessing module, and then there are like uh, kind of object, objects like that uh, do something, and then the syntax is, the syntax is always more or less the same. You instantiate the, the, the object that does the, the preprocessing, and then you feed it to, the, to your data, and then you, after, after fitting the, the object that does the transformation, you use the transform method to transform the object. Then it's fairly easy, it's always the same. There's some other method called fit transform that just does one after the other, and then you just transform the, your, your original matrix, is an amplitude array. Uh, into another matrix, okay? Another transformation that you can do is, uh, this is very important, since you cannot, already know categorical modification, yeah. Uh, if you have uh, categorical variables, which means that they have uh, like string variables, why in, I don't know, a variable that has three values, you have a um, uh, the place where you were born, okay? Say Barcelona, Madrid, uh, Bilbao, whatever. Then every one of these values, they don't have uh, an order, okay? They, it's not that Madrid is bigger than Barcelona or whatever. So they, they are they are all different. 
so you cannot code them as just a number like 0, 1, 2, 3, because if you fit this to a learning algorithm, it will think that 1 goes before 2, 2 goes before 3. Then, in order to avoid that, because then the algorithm, the learning model will be wrong, you need to, something which is usually done is called gamification, where you expand every, every categorical variable into multiple ones. Then, it's like uh, binary coding. Then, for example, uh, here you have, this is the, this is the array, okay? Um, here we have three variables, first, second, third, and every list of those is a different example. So, for example, the, the first variable has only two values, so not one, okay? So, you only need, if, if, if the value of this variable is zero, you put one in the first position, and if it's one, you put a one in the second position. It's just like this. You have as many as many new variables, expanded variables, as you have um, as as different values are there for that column, and then you just use it, and, and it's the same. You instantiate the, the encoder, which is why well, this is an encoder, perhaps yeah, well, the preprocessor, and then you fit it to the data you have, and then you transform it. Like here, I'm using two array to to be able to get the representation. This so these two are the two expanded dummy variables for the first variable. Since the second variable has three different three different values, you have three and this is four. Okay. It's very easy. But these are a transformation that you might want to do and this is included in circular, okay? And another well uh, and the problem with this is that uh, the input features must be numbers. So you see here already we have numbers. We don't have names like Madrid or Bilbao. We already have need them to be numbers and actually one hot encoder doesn't accept a string values. So you need to do a, a pre some preprocessing before fitting this to to the one hot encoder. Um, there are different ways to do this, but if you have never touched the cycle level, it's going to be uh, just Get that you, there are different ways to do this. You have a string categorical variable, okay, Madrid, Bilbao, uh, Barcelona, and you want them to become dummy. You can an easy way is to use uh, the pandas get dummies function, and there are other ways. Use a label encoder and label one hot encoder. Label binary answer does it directly, and you can convert. This is very weird for to me, but you can convert it to a dictionary, and then Cyclone has something called dict vectorizer. But to me, it's I don't understand why would one have to convert your data frame first to a different structure and then use another object to reconvert it to an array when it's an array array. For me, it's a lot but what? Well, this is what it is. It's, it's wrong. The second one is wrong. Maybe thanks for this. Yeah, you will see. Uh, and another thing that is usually done is imputing missing values. In a lot of data frames, what you have is some values that you don't know. And you don't know perhaps because you uh, you never ask or the person didn't tell you and it was impossible to know. So uh, what you do with this is for example you have uh, ages, imagine, then if there's a person you don't know the age, you can say okay, I can say that the age of this person is going to be the most frequent one or the mean of the values I already know. So for this, SecureLearn has something called imputer. So you use the imputer and you say okay, was my strategy. I want to fill all the missing values with the mean. So for every column, uh, the values that are known are replaced by the mean for that column. So it's another transformation. Okay. So there are, these are different transformations you can do with the, with the data, with the uh, circular. And well, this is good because you say, okay, we have the if we have the transformations here, the different transformations here, we just have to use them. Uh, with the data we have in the pandas data frame, and it's, they are provided by Secular. So what, what what's the problem? It's not the problem. So well, the problem is when we, when we have heterogeneous data because you have seen that the different transformers you have to apply them to. For example, you apply the the one hot encoder. You have to apply them to the categorical variables, not all the variables. You want to apply the you want to apply the, the standardizer, you don't have to apply the standardizer to the one hot encoded variables, to the, to the categorical ones. Then if you do that, you're doing it wrong. Then it's not it's not so easy, it's not straightforward. You need to decide which variables you want to apply which transformer. And this in secular is not so easy, you will see. 
But for this, I'm going to use a, a, a problem which is very well known in, in Chaos, which is a web page where you can find a lot of data mining uh, uh, problems, data mining data sets where you can, uh, it's a competition, you can, they give you a problem, they give you a training set, and you, have, you need to you try to, you try to find a model and predict something. Predict, for example, in this case, the prediction is, you know, Titanic was a boat, a very big boat, a cruise, I think, that uh, one in tried try to go <laughs> in 1912 from Southampton, which is in England, to New York, and it failed because it hit an iceberg. So they have records of all the people that tried to go on this trip to New York, and uh, one of the problems with all the information, with a lot of information about the people that were in the boat, uh, you have to try to make a model to predict who lived and who died in the, in the boat. So you can try so you, to see here, and um, they give you all these different, uh, all these different variables: the name of the person, survive this budget variable, if, if, it's, if he or she survived or not. So uh, the passenger ID, the sex, age, the number of siblings and spouses that uh, were traveling with them. Parents and children, the, car, the place where they were, and, and the place where they embarked, because they were there were three different ports where they were uh, going on board. And you see here, for example, in eight, there are in total uh, 891 entries. Okay, and in some cases we have uh, missing values. Here, not all the values are present. And embarked. Also, there are some people where you don't know where they uh, where they step up, or what's the age. And some some uh, variables are categorical. Sex is categorical. Um, the class this is the um, the class first, second, third is also categorical. Even if you can order it, and the place where they embark is also categorical. But some in the cabin, but we're not going to use it. Uh, and some others are just uh, number. Then you need different preprocessing for different variables. This is more or less what it looks like. It's a uh, head of the, it's part of the, the, of the data set. You don't, probably don't see it from so far, but well, it's a, this is a typical, uh, the typical display of a pandas data frame. You have the, the, the headers of the columns, you have an index here with all the different uh, indexes of the rows, you have all the values, and this is it. So you can see, for example, you can see a fare, which is a number, which is in, I guess, in dollars. Uh, the cabin number, where they embarked, this is Southampton and two other places I don't remember. Um, so numbers, you see sex here is a uh, string and all things. And if they survive one, if they survive and zero, if they die, okay? And then what we want to do here, not only is uh, we're going to make the categorical variables dummy, this string, and we want to standardize this other form. <coughs> And we want to impute the missing values for age and embark because as you've seen before, these two variables have missing values. Okay? So we want to do all this. Now well, <coughs> this is more or less what I came up with to do it. It's uh, it's more or less the same as you see it so before, but I'm I'm doing the the transformation targeting certain columns. For example, here, I, I first copied the original data frame, okay, that I reloaded from the Kegel data set. And then, uh, for, for example, for the sex uh, variable, I use one transformer, which is a label encoder, and then I use fit transform, which is fit the transformer to the data set I have, and then transform it to, uh, in this case, to integral numbers, okay? And in this case, uh, this is another, uh, Shit thing of scikit-learn. For example, you cannot you cannot use this uh, this encoder with a data frame that has missing values. So if it has missing values, it says okay, this doesn't work, and then you cannot just use it, and then it's a different thing. So in this case, I have to replace Southampton the S by one, the the second em embarkation place with two, and third with three. Okay, and then I I here use another another. Uh, Processor to impute to impute the missing values for embark and for age for age I use the mean this probably use the mean and for embark I use the most frequent which it makes more sense because uh, there are only di three different values and they are not ordered and there's no sense making a mean okay and these are the four values that I want to standardize and I use this 
Um, uh, then finally, I just uh, apply one hot encoder, which is the one that does damnification, to the variables I want to apply the damnification. And here comes another problem. The one hot encoder, when you want to specify which variables you want to apply the one hot encoding to, instead of referring, being able to refer to them by name, which is more logical and natural, you need to use the in the indexes, the numerical indexes, or where they are. So, for example, since I here want to dam do damnification with B class, I say zero. Here I and also six and the sixth one, which is embark. But then I have to count. Well, I, of course I can script this, but uh, but the fact that I, that there's not a way that I can just specify I want this variable, this this type, on this transformation is something which is not good. Okay, and then finally, well, this is how the how the data looks when it's retransformed. Here I, I wrapped in a data frame so you can see the, the headings and everything, but these are the dynamified variables, and these are the rest of the variables which were standardized. Here you don't, you don't see what they are, so then you get, this is the numpy array that needs to be fed into the second one, okay? And then you do the prediction. You just, uh, in second one, everything works more or less the same. Well, here you don't see it because it goes by score, but you always have an object that you instantiate and then do something with it. Usually fit, fit transform, or something like that. Always fit and fit transform. Everything fits and then transform or predict or something. Then here what I do is I say, okay, the target values is a five, is the values. I usually use the regression, any, any model, just one. And then I do cross validation, which is a procedure to uh, to fit a model and try to come up with the generalization error of the model in a way that really is the generalization error of a model instead of getting it from the training set, which is wrong because then you get a too low value and it may be wrong. Okay? I use them for the validation and the accuracy is that I can predict 80% uh, uh, of the prediction I do are correct. Okay? But this is not important. I'm not going to talk about optimizing the the, the model. It's something. It's just to say, okay, with all these variables, you can, and not knowing the the output, you can predict with an 80 percent of accuracy, which is good. So this is a problem. Is here what I think? Okay, how to think? We have to write a lot of code to the transformation, and it's hard to read. I don't know if you were able. I hope you were able to follow more or less. Even if you don't know about secular, but it's hard to read and hard to, hard to know exactly which column, uh, uh, if, which column you are applying every transformer in an easy way. And also, since you cannot put this in pipeline, where we we will later see, uh, it's not it's not easy to apply this transformation to the training set and then the test set in an easy way. So if uh, you are already transforming the whole data set and then you are not separating the whole the two data sets in a proper way. And these are the people that do much learning we understand much better than the people that, do, that don't understand. Okay, more or less clear till now or I'm speaking very fast. But I will try to slow that. Okay. Then what uh, what uh, one of the solutions I uh, I found to try to make this a bit better for, for your life, for, for it being uh, more easy to read, easier to read, is to use a package which is called a scalar pandas. It's, uh, well, it's in the end, uh, I think it's just uh, syntax sugar because it doesn't do anything special. It does exactly more or less the same that you already seen, but it, it, the way you write transformations is much more intuitive, and uh, then you don't have to to wrap so much your head uh, around the, all the code, and it's much easier to read. Um, well, this is, as I said, as I more or less said, is a bridge package between secular machine learning methods and pandas style data frames. It's not something that provides new functionality to pandas, and not, doesn't provide new new functionality to secular. And the original code was created by the KO CTO, which is Ben Hammer, and later was continued by another guy who's working at Google, uh, Google New York, but he later abandoned it. But the current version is this one. Uh, we put it that, I think I put that number because 
we are using that already, it already in production. And if I read that, in, according to December, if you are using already something in production, it must be one for already one point something. And actually, we care now about uh, backwards incompatible changes. If something, if you cannot introduce new changes in the code that breaks it, so I think it's one point zero. So you can. We use it in production. To, if we use it in production, you can, I guess that you can use it too, and, and it works. Well, then it doesn't. You have never. It has never broken. Right so, this is. We are near close to the end. This is the equivalent of the code you previously have previously seen with all these contributor transformations. Okay. Here, I perhaps I'm not using exactly the same transformations as I used in the previous code, but in the end. The, the goal is the same and it's very similar, but I think it's much easier to read, except for this step, which is with a common um, secular um, uh, transformers. You cannot, I think, there's not a much easier way to do it, but to replace it like this and then use the transformers. But here, instead of having to go instantly all the transformers and do fit and transform, you just Se select which variables you want to, to which variables or variables you want to transform and a transformer or list of transformers you want to apply to it. It's very easy. That's a list of tuples for the first element. It's the variable to select and the, uh, the rest is the transformers. And then it gets applied, okay? So, and you will notice that in some cases I'm writing the, the variable I want to select in you say this parenthesis, square parenthesis, right? Uh, and this is because it's another problem in, in secular learn that some transformers in secular learn work with uh, one dimensional arrays and some others work with two dimensional arrays. So in some of them, if you input, for example, in the standard scale or the inputter, if you input something like this, the output it will give you it's, will be wrong. So you need you need it to be one dimensional. The way uh, to make it, uh, to it, it to be two dimensional, the way to make it two dimensional is to select it like this. Because this way would be uh, one column and n uh, rows. And then row like this. Well, I, can, I, I guess it's auto explanatory or how it works. You just, is that the obvious data frame mapper, which is you map data frame to an array and then. This array code. Okay. Then what you do is the same code, but here you can put this data frame mapper in a pipeline. So when you you can just then feed the original data frame to the to the to the pipeline, and then it gets transformed automatically. So you don't need to first you don't, you don't need to first get the data frame, transform it, and then feed it to the, to the secular uh, model. You just define a pipeline using the mapper as first step and then the classifier, and then just uh, run the pipeline through all the data and all transformation gets done, all the, all the transformer gets speeded, everything gets transformed, and in the end you get the same. The accuracy is the same. And uh, since uh, secular and uh, 016, uh, it works with uh, most cross variation wrappers, so you can use cross bar score with K for cross variation and others. The one that doesn't work with is ca with calibrated classifier CV, which I don't know exactly why they didn't say this one to work with it, but well, and more or less this is it. Uh, well, as well, you, you understood this, this was more or less clear, right? It will, it's very, or not. <laughs> I see poker faces, it's, but perhaps, I don't know, if, if you've never seen, if you don't know how the how machine learning process works, it might be a bit daunting at first, but it's just transformation in the end, what you have to get is that there's a package where something that might be a bit hard to, a bit messy to do with secular learning, you can do it like in a more human way, I think, and it works. Okay, and uh, final words, well, uh, I think that uh, the secular transformers were designed to work with certain problems that you might have in the data, for example, in future and things like that, but since it, they were designed in a pre-Pandas uh, era, they are not really, they are not for humans in the sense that you, 
I usually want to do a lot of things with the data frame that I have to transform it to an array first and, and the transformers that were provided, that are provided, doesn't work well. For example, the one hot encoder doesn't work with the string variables and this is stupid because most of the people that have categorical variables have them, they are provided as strings. So it would be uh, logical for it to accept the strings. And actually there are issues open in the in GitHub for cycling and for it to accept the strings. And well, in this case, uh, since uh, I saw that uh, the, this package was useful and it was not maintained, I started uh, contributing to it. I think uh, in the previous uh, meetup there was also a guy, Gabriel Maetsu, was uh, his name, that started working with Bokeh and realized uh, okay, this is not so hard. I mean, I need to build this, and it's not built that, there yet. And it's not so hard to contribute to free software. Usually, we see that some projects have, I don't know, you, you think that the people are superheroes and they know a lot, and in some cases, yes, they are, but there are some things. And for example, I see some, some things that you do at your company work that. Uh, you work with certain packages and you say, oh, this is an issue here, and it, if it's easy to solve, I think you can contribute to the software too and, and, and take ownership and, and try to make it better, and it's not so hard. In, see, with these some, some small packages, it's much easier. You're working with Django, for example, it's going to be a lot harder. But this package was, I don't know, 100 lines. Then, okay, I can take it and I can make it work better. Oh, it's good. And, but the problem with this is that uh, if you're working with a package that a lot of people use, uh, you can screw it up. I mean, if it's something that people are using in production and you change the API uh, or something, change the function signature, you might break it and then you have to be careful. So you are, this, this is what I did. I, I released a, batch, a new version of the package that was breaking some functionality that was already there. So be careful when you go through it, but use uh, write tests. This is also good. I didn't write it here, but the package has tests, and if you you want to be a, a new developer, you need to write good tests for the future of open source. Well, uh, well future world. Uh, there are some issues open on this package. If you like it and you would like to contribute, you are more than welcome. It's very easy. Uh, one problem is that when you select the column, the transformation are in serial way. I mean one after another, and this is not optimal because they are independent, so they could be paralyzed and do them all the, it, it might not look like a problem for a, such a small data set, but when you have a huge data set, doing the transformation every time serially is not, is very slow. Um, also, you have to list all the columns that you want to transform, um, if you have a hundred columns, then perhaps you want to say, okay, all these columns, mm, most columns they want to transform this way, and there are some others that they want to insert <coughs> only this. Then just don't have to list them all. Also, provide be able to provide transformers for the for the um, target column. And also, I think something that uh, outside of the of this package is give some love to the second transformer because we have seen that they don't really work very well with practical problems. So. Uh, and the, probably the people that are working there uh, might, might be a bit more interested in uh, working, improving the algorithms or anything, so and nobody have time to look at the, to make this work better with uh, practical data sets. So perhaps try to uh, improve the one hot encoder to work with string values or any other thing, or any other transformer where they have problems. Uh, again, you can be a open source free software superhero and try to make it better. Um, I think that's it. So. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't spoke too fast and you got something. But uh, the, the slides are on the internet already, so you look for it. You, you can check it out again. Can you, uh, Twitter account by BCM, we will link the, the slides and the pictures there. We have a YouTube channel for the videos, of course, 
And also we have some licenses of Pycharm. Uh, Jordi, uh, how? Yes. Yes. So 